begins to occur in your life every day to confirm you as Christ's image. Ephesians 1, verse 17 to 20. If you see it, you can read it. Ephesians 1. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, stand up and read it, please. Whenever you're reading the word, you just stand up. The Father of glory. The Father of glory. May give unto you the spirit of wisdom. May give unto you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation. And revelation. In the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of him. The height of your understanding. That the height, you can see what I mean now. The first thing is what? Spirit of wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge, the knowledge of the world you have. When you have that spirit of wisdom, which is the word of God, it gives you what? Revelation. And after the revelation, then there's a light of understanding. That is illumination. Oh, come on. Go on. The height of your understanding. Yes. Being enlightened. Oh, yes. That you may know. What is the hope of his calling? Yes. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the same. That gives you a disposition, oh God. That you may know. That's a disposition. Go on. And what is the exceeding greatness yes. of his power to control? That gives you an expectation. <coughs> Who believe mm -hmm. according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ yes. when he raised him from the dead yes. and set him at his own mm -hmm. right hand. Raising him from the dead, that was about the transition in your life through the world. Go on. And set him at his own right hand yeah. in the heavenly places. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Now, we can see because Christ has died and resurrected, then you are died, you have died with Christ and you have been raised with him. And that is your transformation. Amen. Amen. Being born again is a miracle. Amen. Amen. When I reflect back at some things I used to do before I give my life to Christ, as you look at me, I'm not born as a born again. When my mother gave back to me, she called me Emmanuel. And this boy shall be called born again. No, that was not my name. The name was Emmanuel. And if you have anybody calling a baby, oh, his name shall be called born again. Wait for him, he will still be born again when he grows up. Amen. So, we don't, we are all born in sin. In sin did our mother conceive us. But at some point, we get the knowledge and the wisdom of God. And that gives us a revelation. And that opens the eyes of understanding to let us see that what we are doing is not right. That drinking is not right. Pre drinking is not right. That fornication is not right. That adultery is not right. Oh God, look oh God. That this and that is not right. Then we're going to ask for the grace. And by the efficacy of the grace, you will be transformed. Amen. I want to go into some other aspect. And with this, I'm going to talk about your identity. When people are confused to know the right man of God or who is the right man or who is not the right man, anyone that doesn't know the right man of God simply is not the right child of God. Oh God. The Bible says, I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. If you are, if you have a sibling, you must know their voice. If you are genuine, you must know people that are genuine. If someone asks you to come with 200 pounds so that he might pray for you and five God can be healed, then you are not genuine if you take the 200 pounds to him. Because if you are born again, you won't take 200 pounds to someone that will heal you or five God. Does that make any sense? Because you will know that your healing is through the blood of the Lamb, not by payment. And Christ has paid the price. Does that make any sense now? No. I'm not going to go into too much intuition of that. Amen. I want to go to Acts of Apostle 19, which is the basis, the pedestra for this message. Acts of Apostle 19, and I'm going to read from verse... From verse 12. From verse 12. So, the, if, so that even the anchorship and aprons that touched in were taken to sick and their illness were cured. And evil spirit left them. So when evil spirit, anchorship was taken to her and evil spirit recognized the anchorship. God. Evil spirit recognized the anchorship of an anointed person and left them. The, the, the victim. I don't understand this until someone did. I saw similar examples. Then I understand what this means. I went to a sister's house and she said, Pastor, a uh, few of her cousins were there with the husband. She said, Pastor, do you mind if I take your coat? 
and she went to take my jacket. You know those winter jackets now? One of the heavy ones I have. Just went and said, Pastor, do you mind if I can just wear it? I said, oh, you wear my jacket. He said, there's something I want. And she put it on her. The husband was laughing at her. She removed the jacket. I think a few weeks afterwards, she called me. She's been healed of fibroid. Now, she has a faith that putting on that cloth is what will heal her. I don't know what she's up to, but she was healed of fibroid because that's her faith. Another one I could remember why pastoring under ministers of God because I've worked under ministers of God for quite a long year before starting this ministry as the Lord led me. Now, there is a case of someone as well that told me, Pastor, can I touch your white suit? I believe by touching it, God is going to do something. And I said, well, go ahead. She touched, touched it somewhere here. And I don't know what she's up to, but on the next Tuesday, she called me and said, Pastor, I just came back from, my, from the hospital appointment and I've been told I've been healed of that um, fibroid. I said, which fibroid? She said, ah, she had fibroid and they've always cut the fibroid and to grow again, they'll cut it, to grow again, they'll cut it. But this time around, they can't find it anymore. I said, you didn't tell me you want to heal any fibroid. I, did, I didn't pray for you, but she said, ah, Pastor, you prayed for me. I said, I didn't. He said, but I touched your suit. I said, hey, ah. And then the next thing the woman said, she said, ah, I'm going to share the testimony. I said, how are you going to share the testimony? She said, I will come out and I will tell the church that when I touch your suit and I was healed. I said, hey, while I'm still an assistant pastor, you see that? <laughs> I said, you want to send me out of the church? Don't say God has done something for you and you appreciate God. It is not me that has done it, but it's a God that you trusted that has um, answered you. And that's how I applied wisdom in that area. So one is wisdom to work in the ministry. Working under big, 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 big men of God, I, I always pipe. <laughs> I apply wisdom until God asks me, it is time to move on. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm talking about uncommon miracle. What you are expecting, when you get it, then you say, God has surprised you. Miracle is a surprise. Something that makes you amazed, something that makes you baffled. I see God surprising somebody there. I see God surprising somebody there. That person that is your relative that you are, that is expecting a miracle, I see that receiving their miracle. Sometimes you don't need to be there to receive the miracle. One of our sister inquire, sisters inquire. Her mom, she said, there's something that has been growing on her side and it's growing up and becoming bigger and bigger beside her belly. And during Jesus the healer, she asked me to speak to the mom. I prayed with her. And I told her, I said, I see God removing something from your body. Then during that period, the, um, the sister called me back to tell me that thing that is swelling beside her mom. I don't know what the community tumor you call it. I don't know the medical name, but I know the biblical answer. So, it first starts going down gradually because it's a very big thing. Eventually, it disappeared. All to the glory of God, that is what is called a miracle. And who is the one that has healed the woman? His name is called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Psalm 33 verse 6 established my definition of miracle. Psalm 33 verse 6. Psalm 33 verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heaven made. So for heaven to come forth, it was made through the word. Their starry host by the breath of his mouth. So in other words, miracle is the product of a spoken word. Amen. Amen. But because of time, I'll be rounding up on this version. Um... When we talk about miracle, people that will receive miracle from God must be genuine. Amen. While some people are listening to the message, somebody was sleeping off, and by sleeping off, the result was death. And the message he refused to receive was also spoken into his life, and then he did not even refuse, but he slept off. Just somebody beside you don't sleep. 
And I want you to ask somebody beside you again. Don't be angry about this. Ask them. If they ask you, don't be angry. Who are you? Who are you? It's a rhetorical question. And it's an identity. It is a language of identity. Amen. Who are you is a language of identity. And you are going to find where I got this from. I got it from the same act of Apostle chapter 19. And I'm going to read. You see some people, they are called sons of Scepha. When they saw God has been using Paul, the apostle, to heal people. And that's why we have so many sons of Scepha in the uh, in the world today. People that are not called by God. But they will also tell you they also have not catch it. That they true from demons. But how do you know the money can catch it from? The only handkerchief. That is left to your own spiritual development for you to understand. Amen. Amen. Now, after the Apostles chapter 19, reading from verse 4. Now. After the Apostles 19 from verse 4, you see before me, you can read it, but I'll read it. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, mm -hmm. saying unto the people that they, they should believe on him, which which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Verse 7. And all the men were about twelve. And they went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were added, but when divers were added and believed, believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Verse 10. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia had the Lord, had the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Verse 12. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs of Abraham, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirit went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there and there were seven sons of of one Sceva, a Jew. Seven sons of Sceva. Sceva is a Jew. Yeah, go on. A Jew and chief of the priests, which did so. Also chief of the priests. Go on. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. The evil spirit is the one speaking who can see them within and without. He says, Jesus, I know. Yeah. And Paul, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? He says, but who are you? Amen. 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 See, sit down, please. How can you compare? How can you compare an original with a counterfeit? How can you compare miracles with magic? How can you compare blessing from God with the blessings from Satan? How can you compare a genuine born again with a deceptive person? Some people are angels in the church. But one Friday night they are in church, another Friday night they are in the pub. I was working on the street and I said, this street is a better street. In front of the street, on this side, it's a church. Opposite the church is a pub. I said, yes, this is where they call the junction of choice. You either go there for New Year or you go here for New Year. If you sincerely, you are happy.